when I see a woman who can, is consistently c complaining about her ex, her last three exes being the same way, they're all narcissists. And they might actually be, they're all crazy. They all treated her bad. At some point, if you have five, if you've had 10 roommates and all the roommates you have a problem with, eventually you're the, pro the roommate with the problem. So if you meet a woman whose dad was an alcoholic or a dad was abusive or didn't grow up with a father figure, she will have a high value rich man who treats her really well and cheat with her toxic PT in the back of his uh, uh, Nissan. And you're thinking, but you've got a rich billionaire, but she's like, I want that chaos. So your, your competition is never other men. Your competition is her values and her culture. And when you pick a woman who is the dream girl, who's in cultures are not monogamous, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so I agree to a certain extent. I think when her values are that screwed up, she's correct. But I don't think this is the case with all women. I do think a lot of women do want chaos. But I've definitely been in a situation where I've seen a girl who uh, it was very clear she wanted chaos. She was like dating someone who's clearly like the fucking, she's dating the DJ. And then she's like confused why he's cheating on her and then keeps going back to him. And it was just, it, it was such a turnoff. I was like, why would you let some, I had to turn off to me to watch a girl let a man treat her like that. That's just me, right? That's that's the way I, I see it. But it's a, there's a level of chaos. And when guys see really attractive women, they don't care about that. They don't care about that chaos. Here's the other thing about the chaos. The chaos comes in waves, right? The chaos comes in waves. Have you guys ever had a night where you went out and you just didn't want anyone to talk to you and a night where you went out and it was like it was on and popping have you ever had you have different nights right mm -hmm. Lindsay? You, like sometimes women are in just like different moods i've always said this before dude every night ladies you can disagree with me if you want to miss there's three nights a year or maybe three nights every five years where any girl if you bumped into her at the right time you could end up going home with her oh, if yeah. you were just the right you agree yeah, with me so. if it's just the right if you hit the right girl at the right time all you have to do is the not fuck it up just right. you, yeah. you understand that's, that's a hard one right there you, she just got broken up with something like that happened and if you were just right there on the right night and that's the thing a lot of these girls who, who like chaos if you guys have ever dated a girl who has bipolar disorder or borderline personality yes. disorder when you meet them on the upswing it's open it's, it's awesome ev it's everything wonderful. so much fun awesome. everything yeah. is Oh, for if you guys, this is a, a good lesson for any of you guys who are watching. If you ever meet a girl who's BPD, th this is a the, uh, just this time is the everything. This just is time the, the, yeah, this is the description. Tell me if you've if experienced these symptoms. BPD one though, not two. One. BPD BPD there's, one. Yeah, yeah, there's two different ones. So one in, the, in, like in, this. in this one, what you're gonna see, you're gonna see is openness. She's down for anything. She follows you everywhere. Manic. She wants to do any. She's manic. Obsessive. Like she, you want to fuck her and four Ride girls. Or die. You want to fuck her and four girls at the same time. She's down for in whatever. In the middle of Walmart. Yeah, in the middle of Walmart. <laughs> oh Every, everything is okay. Everything That's is open, right. everything is more, everything is better, and you are incredible. Then you call her back a couple days later and she ghosts you, she blows you off. <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? That was weird. Buyer's she remorse. was so, yo, is it buyer's remorse? <laughs> what is it? A lot of times you're dealing with some, about 6% of the female population, or 6% of the population uh, suffers from BPD, borderline personality disorder. So that's that's essentially what you're going through. But the problem is a lot of guys go out there and they'll meet girls that are, that are going through that and they think that they have game. They think that they created that. Like, no, a lot of times you just bump, you just- you got lucky. You, you got lucky because you met up with a girl while the iron is hot. I know a buddy of mine, he ended up sleeping with this like supermodel. He was just out at a bar one night and he just was drinking alcohol and the girl was like, okay, cool, I want to go home. And I knew who the girl was. And it was just like, she was on that night. She found out her husband was cheating on her. He happened to be at the right place at the right fucking time. And then that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? So she was looking for instant gratification. Yeah, it's a, it for right sure. In that moment, yeah. So for sure. here's, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw a monkey wrench in all this. Sadi is full of shit. She's been full of shit for a long time. She, she, all of this stuff is just basically pop psychology, just rehashed over and over and over again. I don't think it's pop you psychology. Think so? I, I think, uh, she, yeah, I think she's, is. I think she's putting she's, in her she's, opinion. Put it this way. Dr. Orion Taraban is a way better analyst when it comes to like human psychology and evolutionary psychology, but he doesn't have tits and he doesn't look okay, like well, her. Well, I'll, I'll, so. say, oh, hold on, I'll say this about Sadi. I don't think she's claiming that the, some of these things, like uh, the only thing a, a woman likes and all men is a man she can't manipulate. She's not saying that's a well, scientific no, no. What study. She, what she, I mean, literally, she's not, literally she's not the, saying it's scientific. the title of the video is why women want what they are used to. Okay, here's the thing is, is if you're if a woman is used to a hot ass guy who's exciting and fun, like Mr. Perfect sucks. All right. Yeah. Perfect is boring. When when you were talking, I need a guy that can really like turn me on and like really, you know, make bring out that animalistic thing. Once you're with a guy that actually does that, like that's the next benchmark. That's what you're used to. It's not about your you fucking culture. It's not about your fucking, like how you were raised or whatever. It's, was that guy 
the it guy. Was you don't that think guy, the upbringing has that, anything to do with I, that? I, I think it does in a okay. sense because that's going to that's gonna determine who that guy ends up being, Got obviously. It. But once you get to that guy, that's the next level. That's the benchmark for the next one that comes up. Well, so if you're with a guy who's like the guy's a rock climber and he flies helicopters and he you know parachutes from you know high places, right? If that guy is a base jumper and he can turn you on and really get your get your blood flowing, that guy is now your that's what we call an alpha widow. Okay, I'm that like guy is an alpha and you're a widow guy. away from. Okay. So if that's what you're I'm used afraid, to, yeah. Like perfect give it a shot, so, so, give it a shot. I, I think i think what 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 she's saying is during adolescence and young adulthood it, the, the level of chaos you experience as a woman will then lead you to a sense of equilibrium later on in life for that same level of yeah, chaos and then, and, then, and then we and then we hear about church girls who go like nuts because they went to a catholic girl school their entire life and then they suddenly become the biggest sluts that they that, that anybody's ever been with yeah well that's uh, we had nicolette shea on here so and she, is that she because repressed. because if, okay so yeah, is that right is that repress I mean we have Rose on here occasionally yeah. too like she, I mean she is now she's <laughs> like sort of oh I've discovered my sexuality right well her background her family was and she lived in a fucking cult yeah right so I, maybe like, it was a different how, type of chaos she's, I don't see her fucking cult member I think that's yeah. just a personality <laughs> type though there's some women that rebel against everything they've known because they decided my childhood was not what I want to experience anything close so to so then it's again. not what they're used to and it's what they, they want but, but I, I feel comfortable saying that I think for women the bar is set based off of our childhood based off of having a father not having a father having mm. an abusive father yeah. having a and then a based on their level of growth well, right so and you choose, you choose those new yeah. standards the and they and evolve. There's, there's never, the baseline is from your childhood. There's never going to be a one-to-one -one correlation either. There are people who grow up right. without parents who end up great, and there's people who grow up with parents who ended up being terrible. So there's the Menendez brothers, right? Like you, <laughs> There's always examples <laughs> of, of, of either kind of thing. What I think the answer is, is like, or like our discussion about dual mating and mate switching, is that I think it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, there's a spectrum. Like I think a girl can be fucked up enough in her childhood to where she does crave chaos. The other thing, though, is that when we talk about borderline history, Histrionic narcissism or antisocial personality disorder, there's a certain piece of that that is genetic, especially with antisocial personality yeah. disorder. So a genetic necessity mm -hmm. for chaos might also be in there. But one thing I've noticed as a man, uh, you know, when we talk about red flags, when I see a woman who can, is consistently c complaining about her ex, her last three exes being the same way, they're all narcissists. And they might actually be, they're all crazy. They all treated her bad. At some point, if you have five, if you've had ten roommates and all the roommates you have a problem with, eventually you're the pro the roommate with the problem. <laughs> eventually you have to come to the realization like that. you're the roommate with the problem. I've come, I, I've come to the conclusion that narcissism is a cope. It's like, seriously when women say, "Oh, uh, the last oh, guy I was with was a narcissist." That's I think I think a lot of times like, it is. No, that's, I agree. that's a fucking I think cope. Okay? The term is like, abused, but I definitely think that. I think exists. some of them are. I've yeah. seen I've seen some dudes who are pretty bad. Like they're I mean, that's like, why I kept beating trying, the shit out of them. Yeah, we, had, we had Jesse Preston There's on last week, and I was like, sure. I was like, what's the what? When you get to like attention seeking versus like true narcissism. Where's the threshold right there? Because unless you can tell me that, yeah. it's a fucking cult. Yeah, I dated two. So the two guys I dated back to back, one was absolutely a narcissist. And the next one was just batshit crazy and wasn't loved as a child and was super attention seeking. And because what made him, would, what do you think made him a narcissist? Like super clingy? The first one? Yeah. Um, what made him a narcissist was, oh, this is so tough. Do you think, um, do you, only, do you think co women are making a cope or the psychology community, psychological well, a community little is making both. a cope? I think it's, I think They're feeding it's, into I, think, each other. I, I was going to say, I think the psychology community like realizes that women love to use that as sort of a rationale to explain why they like their relationships aren't working. And so therefore it's men's fault. So, well, what can we think? What can we say? Well, it's either a uh, cope or the guys, yeah. uh, you know, the guys uh, it's either uh, he's a narcissist or yeah. the guy is like clingy and codependent. Yeah. Those are usually the so two. So wait, back to so, what you were saying. What about him, like, do you think made him a narcissist? So what made him a narcissist, in my opinion, was his upbringing. I, he was the prized child of his family. He mm -hmm. could do no wrong. He was raised with um, his mother, who has uh, two brothers and seven sisters, and all of the women. He was the first grandchild. He was just the prize of the family. He, yeah. he was everything but a pillow princess and even that sometimes and I, it was just he just thought he was the prize and everything pillow princess? was like fueled. he wouldn't go down on you what do you mean oh absolutely <laughs> they all do that but no, no but that's uh, what a, but that's what pillow princess <laughs> means that's no, what I pillow princess i know what it yeah. means i know what it means he didn't want to ever like get get it popping it's not that he wouldn't do, well eventually over time like he did yeah. everything right but 
that was because we were together a long time. But no, he he was sometimes a pillow princess because he'd be like, yeah, I'm the prize. Like, want to put his hands back. Yeah, but his, ladies, pillow princess show. means when you have a threesome and there's one girl in there who's not as gay as the other it's one. It's always a threesome. No, no, I'm, no, I'm saying where I got the, the term pillow oh, princess okay. from. Pillow princess means like you're, you're having a threesome and there's one girl you bring in and she's not as gay as the other one. And so she won't go down on one girl, but she'll let girls go down on her. That's a pillow princess because her head's on the pillow. Pillow princess yeah, is where oh you lay God. back and you let wow. the other do all. Yeah, yeah, but you, but you don't do any work. My point is you don't do any work. Yeah, that's what I, actually, I actually anywhere. learned something in this. You did. Okay. <laughs> Ready, guys? Sorry, guys. Narcissi- <laughs> narcissistic <laughs> personality disorder. Narcissistic, per- nar- narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, is a mental health condition in which a person believes they are better than everyone else. While many people have narcissistic traits, people with NPD have problems that affect their lives, relationships, and everyday life. People with NPD may appear arrogant with an inflated self-image and disregard for the feelings of others. NPD is a part of a cluster of personality disorders with symptoms of intense and unstable emotions and distorted self-image. It usually starts in early adult years and affects more men than women. Oh, so, was that yes. your guy? I thought, yeah, so okay. things, once you say the definition, I can go, I it rung some details in. So. His emotional intelligence was also almost non-existent. To be raised by all women, you would think that's because that he there's would no such that. thing as emotional intelligence. Okay, awareness. <laughs> then let's say that, okay. um, like emotional awareness, empathy. He, it was almost non-existent. He was a good person in general. Mm-hmm. He would be a good friend, but yeah. then when it came to women or just anyone that he was supposed to be seen as an yeah. equal to, he had to make it abundantly clear that he was not equal to me, to any girl he dated, anyone in the past and future. Like that's just the, what his standard was. Like you are not the prize I am. So flock to me. Can I can I throw something out oh, here and, may, and maybe that's tr- like such Tristan? A because yeah. Tristan, the that's the, the psychology off. major here. Um, so, do you think that perhaps because we we want to so readily apply or diagnose guys with narcissism, do you think because I hear this all the time from people who complain, like especially women who complain about the red pill, those red pill guys are turning into narcissists. Oh my god, is it because they suddenly ha- like sacked up and found their fucking nuts? And now they're like seem like they maybe they're a little bit arrogant, maybe they're a little bit more self important. I think it's the fact maybe they that have like, a higher they can self-esteem change their attractiveness because, and then that's what is. Well, because because divisive. men because what what what's what is the most common thing we hear about guys today is that they're they're pussies, they're they need to man up, they're they need to, you know, they're they're lost boys, they yeah. they need a direction. I mean, what name the we need more masculine men, not less masculine men, because we have had such less masculine men for a long time. So what happens is when that guy finally says, you know what? You're, pro- you're right. I'm going to man up a little bit. You man up 10% more, suddenly you're a fucking narcissist. So, because you care more about yourself than you do about the opinions you're of... saying like the narcissism's uh, relative. Well, b- put, it this, put it this yeah. way. W- like women but are... N- women no longer treat somebody? Well, women no longer become the focus of that guy's life, right? Her, her estimate of... Uh, women's estimate of that guy is not what he bases his own self-worth on. Suddenly, when that happens, everybody says, "Oh, he's a narcissist because he's thinking so, about himself more than he's yeah, thinking so about these, me." These are these are traits. So I think here's where I would draw the line. I would draw the line here. If a woman and a man have a conversation, and the man is very for, forthright, says, "Hey, listen, I'm going to sleep with other women. I'm not going to be uh, beholden to you. We're not going to be in a monogamous relationship. I'm going to do whatever I want." They continue to sleep together, and she expects him to change, and he doesn't change. Often I hear women calling that man a narcissist, but he was totally and completely honest. I know, this is what I'm saying. This is where I'm drawing the line. Where I draw the line is when the man is deliberately like lying to the woman in order to try to have sex with him with no regards for her feelings or anyone else's. That would be closer to narcissism to me. Both things can uh, are possible, but my my point is I often hear women complain about these dudes, and then when I talk to the guys, they're like, yeah, she was fucking crazy. She would break up with me, and then she'd get back, and she'd threaten to kill herself and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I only heard half the story Mm -hmm. and she was using that word as like you said a cope or like a a, a leverage point in order to for her to win the the argument